Nation political editor Chris Steyerwalt with us now. Uh, Chris is in New Hampshire. Chris, I think there's a few headlines here. One will be expectations, one will be the independence, and the other will be voter turnout. Let's start with expectations because right now both of the campaigns have them. Where have they set them going into this primary? Well, expectations are a tough treadmill for Nikki Haley because uh, if she, you told her three months ago, you're going to be in a clear second place in New Hampshire uh, and you're going to be 15 or 20 points behind Donald Trump, she'd say, we can work with that. Uh, that'll work. Unfortunately, given her third place in Iowa and given the fact that it is a two-person race now, that's not going to feed the bulldog. And for her, in order to keep this very slim path, very slim path to the nomination that she has open, she's going to have to, she doesn't have to beat Trump, but she's got to do better than the polls have indicated. She's got to make it close. It needs to be a, a single digit uh, loss might be enough to sustain her going forward a little bit. Uh, but if, if the polls are predictive, uh, Nikki Haley sunk. And will the independence, Chris, be the deciding factor for Nikki Haley to close that gap? Most certainly. And by the way, we should remember a lot of independents are going to vote for Donald Trump. Uh, the independents are going to break. Some of them will break for Haley. Some of them will break for Trump. Some of them will go over to the Democratic side. But yes, uh, for Nikki Haley to be competitive today, she's going to have to win independence two to one, probably, uh, over Trump. And this, of course, is gets us to the other point, which is turnout. Uh, how many of these people are really going to want to come out and do it? Donald Trump is an incredible motivator of votes. He gets people to the polls, but he gets people to polls on both sides. And the question that we're going to get an answer to tonight is, we know Donald Trump's core supporters, the MAGA, the populist, the, those folks are going to come out. They're going to go vote for Donald Trump. They love to vote for Donald Trump. On the other hand, Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents, they'd love to vote against him. They would vote against Donald Trump every day if they could. So what Nikki Haley is hoping is that enough of those independents can team up with basically the conservative to moderate Republicans, the typical New England Republicans or the traditional New England Republicans, that there's enough of a coalition there between anti-Trump and conservatives and moderates that they can they can defeat Trump here. And given what a small state it is and given the questions about turnout, you can't say that it's impossible. Right. And turnout right now, according to the Secretary of State, they're predicting north of 320,000, which would set a record. It was 285 in 2016. As the returns start to trickle in, Chris, what will be the indicators you'll be looking for to determine which way this is swinging? About two-thirds of the vote in the state is down here uh, around Manchester, around Nashua. Uh, we will be looking very closely at how are rural and exurban voters going. And most importantly, there's a line of suburbs that goes from just west of where we are right now down to where Nashua is. And these are places that include uh, the town of Bedford uh, and others. How's turnout there? I will be watching closely, closely, closely. Are those voters who are the Nikki Haley voters, are they turning out in the kinds of numbers that the Secretary of State has foretold? Or do they say, it's all over, I'm not going to bother, and let Trump go with an easy win? We'll be looking right there. How about Dixville Notch? How much weight do you put in those early results of a first win for Haley? I am a Dixville Notch enthusiast. I'm all, I'm all for <laughs> Dixville Notch. Uh, I love the, the the charming and darling traditions of the uh, the the pageant of American democracy. But no, there no there no bellwether. Uh, Dixville Notch is is a thing unto itself. But we appreciate them going out uh, and and starting the election year off uh, for us every four years. New Hampshire's darling. I love it, Chris. Um, Haley and Governor Sununu are joined at the hip. Um, what do you make of this strategy? in these final hours? So the coalition that, that they represent is, and this is Nikki Haley's electability argument that she's making to Republicans here and around the country, which is it works, right? We think about all of the Democrats who voted for Chris Sununu uh, for governor and voted against Donald Trump for president. 
Uh, these are the same people who got Glenn Youngkin elected in Virginia, even as uh, Joe Biden carried the state. So that's the coalition that they're speaking to. These are college educated, typically affluent, moderate suburbanites that would vote for Nikki Haley, did vote for Chris Sununu, uh, but aren't going to vote for Donald Trump. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.